started here. What's happening with the weather in Northeast Ohio these days? I feel like it's December right now. Come on. Yeah, yeah. It's catching up with all the uh, snow we missed over the last couple months, I guess. But thank you for coming out and being here today on this cold, wintry March day. It's nice to see you uh, and your smiling faces. A couple of things as we get started to let you know about. If you've been here for a number of weeks, you know the drill, but uh, you can follow along with the service online, harmonysprings.org slash online. <coughs> Has our order of service. You can also click that, uh, if you haven't already signed up for Church Connect, you can create a profile on there. Uh, do so because it is helpful. Uh, we post all of our events and things you might want to know about up on there. You can also click links through Church Connect that uh, you can so you can give online and financially support Harmony Springs, which of course we always encourage and appreciate. Uh, you can also click a link to let us know that you were here today. It's a digital version of, uh, remember when we used to pass the attendance sheet back and forth up and down the aisles? You had to write your name in. Uh, I guess we stopped doing that during COVID for, uh, for sure. Everything's digital now, so uh, that's a way to let us know you're here. If for some reason uh, you don't want to or can't do that, we still figure out a way to let to know that you're here. So uh, you know you're not gonna fly too far under the radar with us. Uh, yeah. Uh, so thank you. Uh, but if you certainly do that, if you're a uh, first or second week here, we'd love to be able to reach out and give you our thanks for attending and being a part of. Harmony Springs and uh, trying us out and checking us out. So uh, thank you. We continue to welcome uh, those who are coming and checking us out for the first time here. And if that is you, a special welcome uh, to you as well. All right. Uh, if you're joining us online, a special hello to you, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, say good morning. Hello, hello. Uh, we, every week at Harmony Springs, partake and receive communion at the communion table behind me, bread and juice. If you're online, if you've been there a few weeks, you know the drill. Grab some juice and bread and you can participate with us, uh, along with us. If for some reason the, your own juice and bread is not good enough, uh, we could send you some of these uh, sealed packets that we have. So just let us know. Reach out to the office and we could put together a care package of communion for you. So uh, there you go. In our leadership meetings, we talk about important things like uh, the, communion, the communion bread and whether or not we should consider going back to uh, the rip and dip that we did before COVID. But I don't know if you noticed last week, but uh, the bread does seem pretty fresh and crisp lately in these uh, sealed containers. So for now, uh, it'll work. Very good. Okay. We got kids. I hear kids. If we got kids in the back that want to come up forward with me, uh, come on up for a second. You kids playing back there want to come up and hang out up here for a minute? All right. If you're busy back there, that's all right. about this in a little while, but there's been a development. Do you remember when you raised money for the Little Library and Little Food Pantry? Do you remember how you raised money for that? Nope. If you weren't here when we did it, that's fine, but you all had a bake sale, remember, and we told people if they were willing to donate, donate some money to help you all build a little library and a little pantry, that they could do that, and we raised, if you remember, we raised all the money we needed to have somebody build it. And do you remember what the little pantry and little library is? I'm getting a lot of blank stares. <laughs> Have you, you've probably seen one at a park or sometimes churches do it or other places. 
It's like a little house that sits outside and people put books in it. And if you want to borrow a book, you can go and open the door and borrow one. And if you want to give a book to somebody, you can go put a book in there. And the same for pantry. You can put some goods in there, some canned goods or box goods, that kind of thing, for people who might uh, need a little extra to feed themselves and their family. Anyhow, I just want to let you know that all that money isn't just sitting somewhere. We ha do have uh, your teacher back there, Mrs. Hibbs, has a friend who started, took our money and bought the supplies and started building our little library. And you might not have noticed it when you pulled in, but if you go look out one of those windows, you can go over there if you want. You can walk over there and look outside. Can you see the white frame that's in the ground over there? Do you guys want to come over and look? I'll go with you. All right, let's go check it out. Yeah, don't touch the bells. All right. Can you see it over there? Yeah, see, it's all propped up because he put it in the ground, secure. And Liz, he's finishing up uh, building it, right? All right, so you got to keep an eye on that. As it gets done, then you can start putting some books in and you can start collecting some food to put in there. And then people can stop by and borrow a book or take some food. All right, come back over with me. Follow me. Let's go. Here we go. Is this where I have to put on my coat and change my shoes? And All right. So here's my question. Why do you think as a church, why would we raise money and put, build something like that and put it right outside the church? What's it for? Mr. Landon, you got an idea? To help people, yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's a good thing if we build a little house and put some books in there and some food? Yeah. yeah. Because why? Yeah. Because Jesus and God, we're all about helping people. And they want us as a church to help people as often as we can and as much as we can. And that's just one little way. But we're, as a church, super excited that you all are taking part in helping other people. Because it's not just the adults in this room that can help people. It's you too, right? Yeah. So once we build that, if you've got an extra book that you've read a whole bunch of times at home and you're tired of reading it and you want to bring it in so somebody else can read it, bring it in and put it in there. If you've got a box of something that you just don't like and your parents want to give it to somebody else, bring it in and put it in there. Right? All right. God wants us to do good things for other people, to show our love and compassion for those around us, not just our friends, but for everybody. All right. Can I say a prayer for you before you go back to your class and other things this morning? No? <laughs> Mr. Landon, do you want to say a prayer this morning? You don't know what to say? Okay. I'll say it for us. Ready? Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for the many ways that you bless us and our families and lives on church. Help us to continue to find ways to be a blessing to others, to spread love, because you have called us to do just that. Thank you for all you do for us and for the opportunity to do good things for other people. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, go back and have a good time. We'll see you guys. Thank you. All right, adults, it's your turn. Uh, we tried this song out last week, so you heard it at least once. We stand and join in singing. Uh, this song is called Love Can Change the World. simple.
That was for you. <laughs> All right. As we go to the Lord in prayer, we just thank God that we can go to God in prayer and that God hears us. Let us pray. Lord, uh, love can change the world, and you have changed us. And continue to change us, Lord, for the better as we look to a spring tomorrow, as we uh, endure this cold day. We know that you are all about growth and light and warmth, love, renewal, revival, resurrection. We thank you for the promise of spring and the promises that it brings to our hearts as we think resurrection. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer for all whom we pray, those who are touched by illness this day. We pray for caregivers, the sick, the dying, the lost, the confused, those who have forgotten, Lord, maybe even their own names. We ask your presence and your promise to be for them and with them as you promised never to leave us. We, Lord, do say yay to this day, that you've given us another day of life and breath to pray for all those in need from around the world, from Ukraine to Ecuador as we ask your blessings for the countries here around us, this country, the blessings of hope and the, the hope of peace. God, hear our prayer as we also lift up violence in homes, neighborhoods around the world, and we ask an end to all violence. Lord, as we continue to know your presence among us, we thank you for Harmony Springs Christian Church where we seek to uphold and uplift you, Lord, as a God of kindness, as a God that hears and sees. We know that you know us and you've called us by name. And even as you call us to pray now and always, every day of our lives, we remember the words that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen amen as we prepare for pastor joel's message and special prayers for pastor joel and emily and all your family as we read john 11 verses 1 through 7 and 17 through 27. A man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. This was the same Mary who massaged the Lord's feet with aromatic oils, then wiped them with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Master, the one you love so very much is sick. When Jesus got the message, he said, this sickness is not fatal. It will become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's son. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. But oddly, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed on where he was for two more days. After the two days, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. When Jesus finally got there, he found Lazarus already four days dead. Bethany was near Jerusalem, also only a couple of miles away, and many of the Jews were visiting Martha and Mary, sympathizing with them over their brother. Martha heard Jesus was coming and went out to meet him. Mary remained in the house. Martha said, Master, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask, God will give you. Jesus said, your brother will be raised up. Martha replied, I know that he will be raised up in the resurrection at the end time. You don't have to wait for an end. I am right now, resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Yes, Master, all along I have believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right, Harmony Springs, we are continuing our series, the Lenten series here on these Sundays leading up to Easter. Uh, called Unsettling Lent, and it's based on a devotional written by uh, three other disciples, pastors, and seminary professors by the same title, Unsettling Lent. Uh, and over the last few weeks, I've invited you to take a copy of these with you or buy the Kindle version for $4.99 on uh, Amazon. I'm not making any money on that, I promise. Uh, did we give away all the copies, or are there still a few back there? I can't remember. Okay, well, if you need one, I know we were getting low, but if you need one, we can certainly order some more. But uh, over these last few Sundays, all gone? Okay, well, you got to buy the Kindle version then. Over these last few Sundays, I've been, we've been picking uh, one particular day's devotion to focus on for our Sunday gathering here at Harmony Springs. And today... Uh, we are talking about this story that Pastor Kim read for us, the Jesus interaction with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. On our way, on our journey towards uh, next Sunday, we are going to be welcoming the Reverend Chris Egger to come and share with us uh, here on Sunday morning about the nonprofit that she and her husband have started and managed called God Before Guns, as we have a small group of people, uh, probably more than that, but a number, a, a group of people who have come together to see what we can do as a church to help voice our concern over the amount of gun violence uh, occurring in our country and communities these days. So we have invited her to come and share. There's a luncheon after next Sunday, so put that on your calendar, a fundraiser for God Before Guns and South Street Ministries and the uh, anti-violence program that they are running. Uh, you can make a donation then, and Reverend Chris is going to, uh, Eggert is going to stay with us and share more after church is over during our lunch. 
about God Before Guns and the work that they're doing. So uh, I want to encourage you to participate in that. Then the next Sunday is Palm Sunday when we give uh, everybody palms, the kids palms, and we march around in a big circle. Uh, and unfortunately, this is the first year uh, I am not going to be here because our family is going to go on a cruise and I'll wave my palm branches uh, from Bermuda and Pastor Kim and our children's director Liz will help lead the marching around. So you all will have to pitch in and, you know, join the march. It's like a conga uh, line, right? But uh, waving, waving palms together that Sunday. And then I will be back uh, for our celebration, uh, resurrection celebration on Easter. You see the bells up. We've started rehearsing our bell choir. Our choir is practicing, so we should have a wonderful Easter celebration followed by uh, mimosas and Easter egg hunt. So if all of that great music and message isn't enough to get you here, we try to sweeten the pot as much as possible. So now you know the schedule between now and Easter. Let's go back to the story of Lazarus. So Jesus is with his disciples and gets a message that Lazarus has died. We read the scripture that Pastor, we heard the scripture that Pastor Kim read today. Uh, Mary, of course, we know her and Martha from previous stories in Jesus' journey and ministry. And by re when we read the scripture, we can draw from it this idea that uh, Jesus and Lazarus, through all of those relationships and interactions, became good friends because the scripture says uh, the one that Jesus loves so much has died. So I don't, I don't know what they were spending their time doing, uh, drinking, watching the calves, hanging out, playing video games, that kind of thing, but they had formed a close bond. And so uh, Jesus gets the message that Lazarus has died. And then the scripture, the retelling here of this story, makes a point to tell us that Jesus didn't immediately go to them, where it seems as though he could have made that decision. He could have uh, immediately heard that message, that news, and made his way to the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. But he doesn't. He waits. And we're left wondering like so many who have read the story before us, why? Why would he not go immediately to the house of the one he loved and to people he knew, at the very least, to help console them, to do his Jewish duty, to be with that family for days after the death? But he refuses. And then after a few more days, he says to his disciples, okay, it's time, guys, Let's make our way there. I was reading in one biblical commentary uh, some insight or some suggestion on why Jesus might have waited for those extra couple of days and not gone immediately to the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. In that commentary, it says this, at, at the time of Jesus, it was believed that the life force of the body stayed in close proximity for three days. That first century Jewish belief that the life force, we might say soul of the person, stayed in close proximity to one who had gone on or passed or died for three days. So th they go on to say, so the repeated statement in verses 17 and 39 here that we read, uh, that Lazarus has been in tomb for four days, stresses that he is beyond all hope of life. There's some speculation then by people smarter than me in seminaries and historians and commentators that Jesus waited those extra days because by the time he got there, Lazarus would have been beyond all hope. At that point, everyone gathered knew that he was dead, dead, dead. I, I have often quoted this movie, but the line keeps coming back to me uh, from The Princess Bride. He wasn't just mostly dead. 
right? No hope of resurrection. No magic pills from Miracle Max. Lazarus, in that first century understanding, for Mary and Martha and those gathered, their friends and family, Lazarus was gone. His physical body gone, and also his soul, his spirit, gone. But when Jesus got the message that Lazarus had died, he said this, made this odd statement also. Jesus said, uh, this sickness that Lazarus has is not fatal. It will, underline and highlight this, become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. Not just mostly dead or partially dead, 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 dead. And Jesus says, even when all hope is gone, even when uh, there is no possibility of Lazarus rejoining this living world, even that in the realm and the kingdom of God is an occasion to show God's glory. The first century Middle Eastern Jewish people who gathered then and who read this retelling over and over for the centuries to come, those people we know from history and reading the scriptural stories that those people knew what endings were like. They knew death well. Even before the Greeks and the Romans came in and conquered and destroyed temples in Israel, right? Uh, time after time after time, again, in we, the Old Testament, we read the stories of endings, of things coming to an end. Whenever we thought things would last forever, whenever they thought things would last forever, it seemed that someone would come in and take it all away. The Persians, the Babylonians, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, would come in and destroy, destroy all that was loved. People then knew death and endings well. In some way, this story of Lazarus being beyond all hope is a, a metaphorical uh, communication to them and to us that in God's realm, in God's kingdom, endings, God acknowledges that endings happen in life over and over and over again, but nothing is beyond God's ability to make it an occasion to bring God glory again. A while ago, uh, I preached, now this was years ago before COVID, so I don't, uh, I won't blame you if you don't remember. Uh, I preached a sermon on the table, a sermon series on the table called Table Talk, written by a disciple seminary professor. And this story came back to my mind as I was thinking about how in life we experience endings over and over Again, not just endings of life like Lazarus, like Mary and Martha were experiencing uh, a terrible loss and sadness. We know that happens, don't we? If we're living and breathing, we know that life comes to an end, that we will all end eventually. But as I was thinking about this, I was uh, taken back to a story that the seminary professor uh, Michael Graves writes in that book, Table Talk. Uh, describing a Sunday that he stood behind a communion table in a small disciples' church in Arkansas. In the book, in the, in the first chapter, he writes this, I stood behind the table inscribed with those words about remembering Jesus, and the people started filing forward to receive communion. And as they did, I had a vision. Not the blurry-eyed kind, more the clear-eyed kind that probably has everything to do with my knowing what many of them were going through. There was Bill, the retired minister on the left side in the back pew, whose wife had recently passed away. This might have even been his first communion since her passing. And so Bill limped forward on his bad knee. There was a single mother with two kids whose husband had repeatedly cheated on her and they had divorced. She was back in church, she and her children. 
on and on the list went. People facing the prospects of job loss, a malignant diagnosis, all manner of little deaths. There in that little church in Arkansas, I saw broken people coming to eat broken bread and to be made whole again. I can relate. As a pastor, we have a unique perspective on those who gather on Sunday mornings. You trust us as pastors to share the struggles and the tragedies and the losses in your life. And we as pastors acknowledge, listen, and with compassion know that life is full of loss and sadness and hardship and even death. And as hard as it may be, as difficult as it may be, it is also our job to remind you and to remind ourselves, probably, if I'm being honest, more often than I might like to admit that the story, this story of Lazarus, is, has a deep truth in it that we all needed to be reminded of, that the most difficult things in life, all of those things listed that Mike saw as people came forward to the table, and that we see as pastors, that I see as your pastor, the stories I know of you and your life, things shared and even things not shared. Life is hard, and it's full of death. But know this, my friends, and this is what I need reminded of, maybe you do too today, that even when things are beyond all hope, in our minds, Jesus sees them as an opportunity to show the glory of God. And so I'm left wondering this, as we've been reading through these uh, devotionals on Unsettling Lent, they're all written from the perspective that as uh, a community of faith, as a corporate community, the stories of Jesus, the things Jesus did in his ministry have to speak to us not just individually, but together as one. So I'm left wondering this, if in our own lives, if Jesus knows that even our hardest deaths, our hardest things to deal with, are not beyond God's ability to bring hope and love and compassion, then what does that mean for us corporately? And I don't know, I've still been thinking through this, but at the very least, I think things like this. I remember when I first came here to Harmony Springs, a number of you showing, sharing with me that in our previous iteration as church in High Street in downtown Akron, things were hard. Conversations were hard. Things, I might even say, were toxic and near death. I remember a number of you telling me that when you woke up on Sunday morning to come to church, you just decided to stay in bed or to stay at home because going to church what seemed harder to do than just staying put. High Street in Harmony Springs is just one example of that. And it's not just our church. It happens, let me tell you, I hear other pastors, I meet with other pastors, I hear stories of other churches. Anytime you get broken people together, things can very quickly turn bad and turn toxic. But no matter how bad they are, they are not, it is not outside the realm of God's ability to breathe new life into us, into our gatherings, and into our lives, is it? We have a number of people who were a part of our congregation when we were high street who decided to uh, get off ship when we were going through that hard stuff. Like, I don't blame them, right? Who wants to go, go to church on Sunday morning and have hard, hard conversations and toxic conversations and relationships? I don't think anybody really wants to walk into that. If you do, there's probably something wrong with you, right? And a number of people jump ship, and I get it. But a number of people also stayed the course, stayed on board, kept on rowing, 
and look where we are now. And I've also heard a number of you say, I wish some of those people would come here on a Sunday morning to see what Harmony Springs is because I don't want to just stay in bed or stay at home anymore. In fact, I just heard this from one of our newer attenders uh, who hasn't been to church in over 20 years. He said this to me in an email, I look forward to getting out of bed on Sunday morning and coming to church on Sunday morning. And my friends, if a person younger than me writes that and tells me that, that is a win, a big win for a church these days. So I guess I'm left with these questions for you and for myself. What, what endings or deaths in your own life does God, do we need to understand, comprehend, and believe that God has the ability to speak life back into? Maybe it's all those things listed like Pastor Graves was listing as people came forward. A loss of a loved one, divorce, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All of the hardships of life. What's up, Maddox? <laughs> Where in your own life do you need to hear God speak those words or Christ speak those words of new life into you like he did when he got to the home of Lazarus. Let's not, uh, Martha is a cautionary tale, right? Martha said and got mad at God, and uh, we've all been there, haven't we? It's easy to get mad at God, but Jesus says, hey, I'm here now. I'm ready to speak life into uh, someone who was understood to be beyond all hope. And all of that is a precursor we know now looking back to Jesus dying his own death and even that not being enough to stop God and God's kingdom work in this world. The precursor to Christ's death and resurrection. My friends, today, like the title of this devotional that I've read and we are focused on today, do not let death and all the hard things in life fool you. God has the ability to speak life into anything. Maybe you need to hear that today. I know I do. May it be so for all of us. In the deepest, darkest, hardest things in life, when things are beyond comprehension, when we are not just mostly dead, but dead, 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 Christ says and speaks life. We can, with the grace of God, rise again. Amen? Amen. You will know this one. i
Thank you, Pastor Joel. And as we prepare for communion time, um, I, for some reason I was thinking about this. I, I think it's the kids uh, helped me to remember um, a prayer request of a child. Uh, she was five years old, and uh, she came all the way up to the table. She had a request, and her request was to pray for her hurting finger. And she lifted it up to me, and I'm trying to look at it. And she says, it hurts. Well, I couldn't see anything. I said, where? And she keeps pointing, and I couldn't see a thing wrong with her finger. And I said, I, I don't see it. And she said to me, God does. <laughs> it wasn't a chair, but I could have sat down. <laughs> but, yeah, God sees us. God sees all. And she was right. And I thank God for God's presence here among us in this Holy Lenten season. As we prepare our hearts to receive communion, we remember that there are no fences, no walls. God sees, doesn't he? God sees all. And the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he gave thanks and took the bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. This he said do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after dinner, Christ took a cup, Christ took a cup and poured it out for them as he does us, and said to them and reminds us that as often as we drink of this cup and eat of this bread, we do so in remembrance of Christ. When we come to the table, we bring all of us, our experiences, our hardships, our joys, our concerns, and we can freely receive the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God of the people, you are the great resuscitator. We are grateful that you love us so much that you gave us immortal spirits. You light the fire of life beneath us and drive us to bring that life light to our communities. Lead us to the places of death that we may be your reviving hands. Let us not be afraid to speak up against policies that favor death in the disguise of life and liberty. Let us seek the life-giving power of justice and loving our neighbors and support systems that help us all to do that. Compel the hearts and minds of our leaders and world powers to choose compassion, justice, and humility over greed, coercion, and death. Convict those that seek to control and scheme for their own gains. We are thankful for your life-giving mercy. Show us where we can throw lifelines and extend that mercy to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My friends, the table is set. We invite you to come forward and to receive these gifts of God for us, the people of God. Would you come?
stay close to you it's really that simple i want to stay close to you as simple as this song i want to stay close to you it's really that simple i want to stay close to you my whole life long all right as we bring things to a close this morning a few things we want to announce and highlight that uh, you may want to be a part of in the weeks to come I did get a, a little bit of a preview of the next few weeks here, but again, I'll mention uh, next Sunday, Reverend Chris Egger sharing with us on God Before Guns as a part of the message here, and then lunch afterwards. Please stay and then hear from her uh, about the ministry of God Before Guns. Debbie, do you want to add anything else to that or say anything? I'd be happy to have you do that. There you go. Sure. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, I hope everyone will stay. Uh, the lunch is being completely provided. People are donating the food. So any um, gifts or offerings uh, for the meal, 100% will go to the two organizations we've been um, learning about, uh, South Street Ministries and God Before Guns, both working to reduce gun violence uh, in our neighborhoods and our communities. So uh, hopefully... Uh, you can all stay and uh, enjoy the good food and uh, give generously to these things. Wonderful. Thanks, Dan. Uh, years ago, I know I said if uh, you may or may not remember things that happened before COVID here at Harmony Springs, but when Pastor Kim was the chaplain at Stowe Glen Retirement Center, we would often uh, sort of have an inside church joke that she would announce when uh, very early in the year when she was going to be doing the live nativity at Stowe Glen. In fact, even around this time of year, we would say, uh, we're on the books for so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, even though uh, Pastor Kim is no longer at Stowe Glen and is graciously visiting people and seeing people for us here at Harmony Springs, uh, we have decided that we didn't want to see the live nativity stop. So... Pastor Kim, do you want to uh, make the announcement? Here we go. <clears throat> Harmony Springs is having a live nativity. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and we need you all there doing parts. Now just, <laughs> we're going to have uh, live animals here uh, the first Tuesday in December. No, the second Tuesday of December. Is it the 12th? Is that yeah, what it is? Second, okay. second Tuesday of December. So we're put it on your calendars. We're really excited about it. It'll be 6 to 8, and there will be a, a camel here and a donkey and a sheep, and the sheep has a friend. It's a goat. Uh, the sheep has to come with a goat. I don't know why, but uh, and there might be a couple extra sheep there. So anyway, uh, we're looking forward to that, and um, thank you for letting me announce that. <laughs> yeah. I love the night of nativity, so I hope you guys can come. It's not too late, is it, to tell you? Yes, that's right. So put it on your calendars now. Uh, and I will say this, you can look forward to in July, we actually have, we've been renting our facility to a number of folks who are doing weddings and receptions, and the last Saturday in July, I think it's the 29th, something like that, uh, we have a couple that's doing a reception, and they wanted to do a Christmas in July-themed reception and asked us if they could borrow or use our Christmas decorations. Uh, so I'm going to take that opportunity on that following Sunday to have us have a Christmas in July celebration also. So that may be the next time you hear about the live nativity uh, at the end of July where we'll be uh, s start recruiting folks to help uh, be a part of that. So, Jen, did you have something you wanted to share with that? Well, on, on the, the comment about the sheep and the donkey, Jen said, we don't judge who you love. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take them all. Yep. Yeah. Also, really what I wanted is to remind you that there are Girl Scout cookies coming this week. Thank you. That's yeah, inflation. Yeah. 
I think it is five, but I could be wrong. I don't know. But uh, So, yes, next Sunday, our Girl Scout troop that meets here at Harmony Springs will be setting up at a table back there. Uh, support them. We have... We have an arrangement with that Girl Scout troop that they use our building twice a month here. And uh, then this year, for the first time, uh, Christy is going to put them to work out in the garden. So it's a uh, work for use arrangement. So, yeah, hey. thank you. <laughs> and I'll use that transition to thank folks who have signed up for shares at the garden this year. I think we're, are we fully up to eight? Uh, eight shares, which is what her goal was, Christy's goal was this year. If you still would like to, she has said she has some wiggle room, like we could do a couple more shares if you just really wanted one and just haven't done it yet, uh, we can certainly work that in. But for the first year doing shares uh, of produce that you can pick up every Sunday after church uh, in the afternoons uh, and also locally raised eggs that she's getting from a farm in Hartville, uh, all of that, thank you for doing that. Uh, we do have plans, it, it is on my list, although it's lower on my list than it has been, uh, for us to eventually have our own chickens and eggs out here, uh, as well as bees and honey. So we're, we're working, uh, working along, along those lines. So there you go. Thank you for all the folks who have contributed to that. Yeah, Jen? That's right. You were going to remind me, and you didn't. Okay, all right. What would I do with the mic? There you go. Live nativity <laughs> and Girl Scout cookies. I want to go first next time. Okay, so that all right. Well. <laughs> Just to let you know, the women of Harmony Springs, we're going to support and have a social on April 13th in the evening at 6 o'clock. Um, we will provide the meal for that. And if there are women who need child care, we will also provide child care for that night. Um, we are asking for an RSVP by April 9th. Um, so that we can make sure we have the food that we need. And if we are going to provide child care, we have you know, the people lined up for child care. Um, just last week, we were able to donate 12 bags to the um, Stewart's Caring Place. So I think we're actively doing a lot of stuff, and we want to make sure that women who cannot come during the day can have um, support for spiritualness and food. And we have actually fun. <laughs> um, you know, during the day. So, again, that will be April 13th at 6 o'clock, an RSVP, I guess, to me, um, or Liz, or <laughs> Debbie, <laughs> anybody, um, please let us know so we can make sure we have enough um, for everybody. Thanks. Very good. Thanks, Jen. Appreciate it. Uh, and I'm going to leave things this morning on a high note. I wanted to share this with you. Uh, uh, Joel, yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I always yeah. interrupt. No, you're th fine. This is my obligatory interruption yeah. when you're getting ready. I should to... always just give you the opportunity. I'm sorry. No, it's go okay. Ahead. Go ahead. I'm not Paul Schaefer or anything. Uh, but a couple of things on the music. Uh, first of all, I'm s always so ecstatic when uh, Ed Lowe uh, it can make it and mm -hmm. gets to play along with us. It really makes my, yeah. uh, really makes my uh, Sunday mornings uh, flow much more uh, joyfully. Second, uh, if you're in on playing handbells uh, for Palm Sunday or Easter, uh, I'm hoping that you know what the schedule is, the rehearsal schedule and all that kind of stuff is. Please keep an eye on it. Um, I, om I almost missed the one that's coming up here after service today because uh, I wasn't keeping an eye on it. So I'm warning you to, I'm attending my own lecture at this point. <laughs> um, and finally, uh, choir uh, will be singing on Easter Sunday. Um, Hopefully you got an email about that. You'll be getting another one today that will let you know the exact uh, rehearsal times, but just wanted to give you a heads up. The music is here. Thankfully, Debbie has it, and if it weren't for Debbie and Donna and Jimmy, frankly, I, I can't imagine how the music would ever happen here. Uh, but also, the first rehearsal will be next Sunday at 9.45 or... My mate, Mary, would be disappointed if I said 9.45. It'll be at 9.47. <laughs> she says, I always uh, 
I always assign things at unusual times, <laughs> and so 9.47 <laughs> next Sunday will be choir rehearsal, and I'm sorry, I know there are some folks who are going to be in Sunday school and won't be able to do it, but uh, anybody who can, that'd be great. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's it. Uh, yeah, Tanya, go. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, we just keep going and going here. Uh, what's that? Ooh, all right, everybody, go grab a cup of coffee. We're uh, on Holy Week. We are doing a mon. This is our first year doing this experiment. A Monday Thursday, which is our celebration of Jesus's uh, gathering with his disciples in the upper room and breaking bread with them. Uh, we are doing a dinner together. We're calling it Spicy Monday Thursday because Kaneta is making spicy Indian food. And she says non-spicy food for those lasagna or something for people who uh, don't want that. Uh, dinner followed by bingo as well. Anything else you want to say about that or that I'm missing? Uh, and I, I, I sign up sheet in the back. Okay. And I will say this. Uh, you know, I was reading, I shared in my sermon that I was reading some snippets from that book, uh, Professor Michael Graves on Table Talk. And if you remember my sermon back then, which I know you all do, uh, the upper room was not, was not always a sort of solemn occasion. In fact, it rarely was. It actually mostly was pretty raucous. And uh, it was a dinner party followed by a lively conversation about things. Uh, and the literal translation of the Greek there might, might even be interpreted drinking party. So having fun, gathering together, is right in line with Monday Thursday. Uh, so there you go. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, spicy Monday Thursday. You can come and eat and be together and have a good time. So uh, that's what we're doing. Then uh, what Debbie was referring to is a prayer vigil. You can sign up online. Or is there a sign-up sheet in the back for that also? Uh, Debbie has it uh, on Holy Saturday before. Uh, we have been in the habit over the last few years of uh, taking time slots and having uh, a prayer visual that will last us up until Easter, the resurrection. Okay. Anything else I'm forgetting? That it, this is good. We, we got a lot going on. Uh, so the thing I wanted to end with was this. We have a, a person in our church who is not here today because she's decided to celebrate her 60th birthday uh, by going to brunch and a show. Uh, and she told me she's not going to watch the recording of the service. So, would you all uh, join me in uh, singing happy birthday to Shannon Getz, who's turning, who turned 60? Uh, is, today's her birthday, right? Today's her 60th birthday. But you got to do it to the camera in the back, so when she watches later, she can, uh, you know, see us all. So, let's stand up, turn around, and face the camera. Here we go. Happy be blessed. We'll see you all next week.